Hello everyone! In this video, I will explain p-values in the context of a statement by the American Statistical Society, also known as ASA, which clarifies some common misconceptions. My name is David Blanco. I'm a PhD student at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. I'm involved in the Mirror Project, which is funded by Marie Curie Actions. Besides me, many other people are involved in this contribution. First of all, it is important to mention that advising a patient relies on much more than p-values. It requires evidence, consistency, relevance, and a decision. The table of evidence is supported by three legs a previous and good foundation, the power of the study, and a small p-value. They are all necessary. It is important to point out that a p-value of less than 0 0.05 does not support evidence by itself. The other two conditions have to be satisfied. Traditionally, p-values below 0 0.05 were considered to be essential in science. But in 2015, a scientific journal banned p-values, arguing that the statistics were too often used to support lower quality research. After that, science and nature endorsed that measure. If a pirate were to go hunting for the treasure of a significant p-value, he or she could distort the scientific process in many ways. But even if a p-value is calculated properly, it does not guarantee the reproducibility of the results. Hereafter, we will explain why. In 2016, the ASA published a list of six formal statements about p-values. The fourth item states the importance of transparency. Proper inference requires full reporting and transparency. The first indicates what p-values show. It says, p-values can indicate how incompatible the data are with a specified statistical model. We will explain it later through an example. All the remaining statements indicate what p-values do not provide or measure. Later on, I will also clarify the meaning of the second item. Likewise, prominent clinical journals have asked for transparency and reproducibility to avoid waste of resources and ethical conflicts. Let us focus on the first item of the ASA statement. The smaller the p-value, the more incompatible the data with a specified statistical model. For example, let's say we administer two antihypertensives to 10 volunteers and measure the difference in their blood pressure. It will have a value of zero for a draw and will be greater if the new drug wins. However, it will vary from one patient to another according to sources of variability, such as time of day. The p-value measures the probability of obtaining samples whose means are greater than or equal to the observed mean in a scenario involving a draw. For example, if the observed mean turns out to be zero, there is a one-half probability of obtaining samples whose means are greater than or equal to zero. Under the same hypothetical scenario, if the observed mean were 0 0.04, this probability would be around 10%. And if the sample mean were 1, this probability would be only 8 per 10,000. In this case, following the first point of the ASA statement, we would say that the observed results are hardly compatible with the previous model. But does it mean that the probability of both antihypertensives 
having the same effect is 8 per 10,000. According to the second ASA statement, no. The reason for this is that we confuse two conditional probabilities. Let us demonstrate this confusion through an example. Let us suppose that these guys are your office mates. They have some different characteristics. Some have long hair, some have glasses, some have both, and some have neither. On the one hand, if we look at those who wear glasses, we see that 4 out of 8 have long hair. On the other hand, if we look at those who have long hair, we see that 4 out of 5 wear glasses. This concept is subtle. In both cases, the numerator is the same, but the denominator changed. The denominator represents what we already know. In the first case, we know that your office mate wears glasses, and we wonder if he has long hair. Well, in the second case, we know that he has long hair, and we wonder if he wears glasses. Or, in other words, on the left, we calculate the conditional probability of long hair given glasses, and, on the right, the conditional probability of wearing glasses given long hair. Let us look at another analogy, this time with an indicator of the true situation, which is what p-value does. Here the blue circle represents the sick, while the green circle represents those who tested positive. These two dichotomies generate four groups. 1. Sick, sick positives. Correct. 2. Healthy negatives. All right as well. 3. Sick negatives. Bad. And 4. Healthy positives. Also bad. In this case, the probability that a sick person tests positive is high. But the probability is low that someone who tests positive is also ill. In an extreme example, Stephenson recalls that the probability of a Catholic, a Catholic being the Pope is very low, while the probability that the Pope is a Catholic is pretty high. Similarly, the probability of error given P can be much higher than the probability of error given a hypothesis. In this table, the rows represent the unknown scenarios, while the columns represent possible sample results. One thing is the probability of the column given the row, and another thing is the probability of the row given the column. The first quantifies the probabilities of taking wrong or right decisions, if the hypothesis is wrong or right. The second establishes the probability of error once the decision has been taken. Again the denominator has changed. Over the last few years, some of the most authoritative voices have insisted on the importance of having a clear understanding of all these concepts. Did they succeed? Unfortunately, they did not. As a recent example, the fourth edition of a book published in 2016 misleadingly states that the p-value is the probability of being wrong when stating a certain hypothesis. As I have said, a small p-value indicates little compatibility between the data and the model, but when we have a significant result, what is the probability of being wrong? Or, in terms that can be verified, what is the proportion of significant results that can be replicated in the future? Ioannidis warned us about the difference between p-values and this interpretation. Let us follow his methodology and repeat that evidence is supported by three legs, a previous and good foundation, the power of the study, and a small p-value. 
we already know that the previous background of a hypothesis is important. As we pass filters from research to development, the basis consolidates. We also know that, uh, that we need a good design with enough power to collect good ideas provided by nature. And when facing the threat of bad ideas, you need a good filter. Let us now quantify the influence of each leg by using a visual program that our UPC colleagues have developed. The left column indicates the real effects, while the right indicates those that are false. In this first example, the previous expectation of the effect is high, 75%. Therefore, the left column is thick. Additionally, the top of the chart shows statistically significant results, while the bottom shows those which are not. Because the power is high, 80%, most of the results in the first column are significant. And since the p-value is small, most of the results, 95%, in the right column of bad ideas, are not non-significant. Thus, when we gather all the significant effects in the lower quotient, we see that 98% come from real effects. That sounds good. But if we lower the expectation of the true effect to 20% and the power to 10%, even with the same p-value, significant results coming from real effects fall down to 33%. Consequently, we have seen how important each leg is. If we do not guarantee power and a strong background, a significant p-value alone does not support the evidence. So, what should we do? We of course do what the guidelines recommend report effect size with its uncertainty intervals. I hope this video has helped you. Thank you very much for your attention. And, of course, many thanks to the Mirror Project and to Marie Curie Actions for their support.